Greetings, NFT Vikings. I'm Cardano Thor, helping you discover and conquer the digital world of NFTs. It's time for another CNFT brew. And today we have a special guest on Blake CNFT. Welcome. Good to see you, man. Hey, it's an honor. It's good to be in the uh, inaugural episode of, of having guests on and just uh, great to be here. Yeah, making making history, even though nobody really cares about this uh, type of history, but we're going <laughs> to... Yeah. We're going to have fun and we're going to start off as usual. Um, I don't know if you've watched these videos before, but what we're going to do is go through the most exciting uh, drops happening this week. Then we're going to cover the latest news, then just talk a little bit about what we're doing, considering the market right now and, and stuff like that. So first of all, guys, like and subscribe. Also, go ahead and, and check out Blake's channel. Do you want to Tell the guys a little bit about yourself, uh, just real quick, because you have a great YouTube channel. You cover CNFTs. Hey, I, I really appreciate that coming from you for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, Thor and I do a lot, a lot of the same stuff. Love talking about Cardano and Cardano NFTs. Um, I try to put projects in front of you that I think deserve your attention, and then, you know, you as the audience decide if if it deserves your ADA. Um, I'm on YouTube uh, primarily. I do a weekly live stream Thursday nights at eight o'clock Eastern. Um, so you can find me there at Blake CNFT. And then I'm also on Twitter a good amount, like every other crypto <laughs> Twitter person, uh, Blake CNFT there too, but also the other platforms, Discord, all that stuff. But those are the two main ones that I'm normally on. And I just love talking Absolutely. about Cardano. Yeah, for sure. And I think you're doing doing a good job. So keep that up. Check them out, uh, Blake CNFT guys. Now let's jump into it. Uh, Cause it, it was, uh, I feel like every week, I say this every week that it was a crazy week in CNFTs. Um, <laughs> So it's, it's, it's partially true, but yes, <laughs> ex yeah. exactly. So it, it might not be especially crazy, but it's still crazy because there's always a lot to cover. And um, but I, like I said, we're going to jump into, first of all, what's happening for the next seven days or so. Um, so before we before I start going through my list, is there anything that you are like particularly excited about this week? I think probably what I'm most excited about, and I'm going to be doing an interview with them on Wednesday, is Aiden Ninjas. I mean, they've been, a, mm. I think their first mint was in September. I was in CNFT since April. And when I saw their art, I just was really excited about it. And they've just been grinding. They've been in Twitter spaces. They're always thinking up new stuff. Um, this is not a paid promotion, but I, ju I just, I do really <laughs> like their stuff. And um, I also lived in Asia for a little bit, uh, for a few years. So anything kind of with an Asian vibe, I'm already like, okay, I'm already in this. So yep. uh, they, they kind of check a lot of the boxes for me. For some reason, the floor has not been, at least in my opinion, has not been relative to the amount of time and effort that that team has put in. But yeah, they, they've got their season three, and I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Ada Ninjas is one that I'm that I'm particularly interested in. Exactly. Uh, we'll definitely get into that, uh, but that's a little bit later in the week. Uh, first happening for at least, you know, because this is a curated list, you can go to Wednesday NFT, you can check out what, you know, that full complete list of things that are dropping this week. But, you know, a lot of it is junk. I'm just going to say that a lot of it is uh, not that great of quality. So I like to go through it. I like to kind of see what other people are excited about and talking about and then pick my favorites. And speaking of junk, uh, Junkies is dropping uh, on Wednesday if you're on the whitelist uh, and Thursday for public at 8 p.m. UTC, 48 for whitelist, 68 for public, uh, 10. Th so this is basically the second half uh, of the collection. Uh, Junkies. Um, obviously, we have veggie mates already. Do you have any veggie mates, Blake? I don't. Uh, but I will be talking. I'll be talking with them probably after this video is live. Um, talking with them on Monday night, and uh, really excited to talk with their team because really th that's one of those projects where you hear a lot about it, you see a lot about it, but maybe there's just not enough because there's so many projects to think about and that take up your time space. It just never got to a place where I was like, I really want to dig in. Um, so part of the interview is selfish of like, I want to know more about this. So what better way to um, hear about a project than to kind of hear it from from the horse's mouth. So excited to have them on and, and hear more about the project. But no, currently do not own any, but I've always been curious from afar. It's so funny because I, I had the exact same experience. I only had one and then I had them on my stream. Uh, and, and I actually bought my second one during the stream, but they're great guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yeah. I think they, they probably do deserve a little bit more attention. Um, 
I I think what they're doing is pretty interesting. You you're probably going to ask them about gre- the greens token, uh, things mm-hmm. like that. So they have a lot of uh, the comics. They have a lot of exciting things uh, happening. I think they have a good team. So I'm definitely looking out for this drop happening on Wednesday if you're on the whitelist and you do have one to one. So sorry, Blake, but uh, you're uh. going to have to wait until Thursday. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's a one-to-one um, whitelist allocation for each veggie mate that you have. So I'll be able to make two uh, on the whitelist. I'm, I'm used to not being on whitelist. I'm sure you feel the same way. So that's not a Absolutely. surprise to me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm actually very... Sub- I probably messed this one up somehow. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next we have Future Fest. This is on Thursday at 7 p.m. UTC. Have you... Um, what do you know about future fest because i this is another project that i think is going a little bit under the radar um i feel like considering the quality they're not getting as much hype as i would expect but you know they right now they are uh doing this uh what do they call it uh the the future friends music festival and uh basically collapsing with eight different projects and yeah I, i feel like it's really well done uh, what do you know about them, Blake? Yeah, I, I, well, that's one of those peripheral ones again for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Cardano Poppy is involved. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm part of the Benjamins group, so they were, you know, involved in some of the the whitelist stuff and and helping their project. Um, I know they had Cascade on recently for like a live yeah. show, and he's a big like EDM artist. I've seen the video footage of what it looks like being in the in the stadium or whatever they call it and, and watching the show. I think it's all great stuff. They've got the two different types of, of bots, the, the deluxe bot and the, and the regular bot. Um, and I think in terms, in terms of music Cardano NFTs, it seems like they're kind of leading the charge with what, with what they've got going on. Yeah, they, they absolutely are. And they already have a working product and, uh, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, there's so many collapse happening. I feel, and I actually might get onto that in a little bit. Um, but this, I think, is a, a very unique uh, collab that is, yeah, a little bit different to to other collabs you see. It's not just a, a, a Twitter giveaway collab. You know, they're actually mm-hmm. creating unique um, assets that are going to be usable in their, you know, in their uh, ecosystem. And it's only 10 ADA for this mystery box drop. Uh, so it's happening on Thursday, 7 p.m. 10 ADA, there are eight unique. This first one is with Angel Baby Hit Squad. Mm. So if you're a fan of fan of theirs, you might want to check it out. Unlimited 24 hour mint, which I'm a fan of because then I can relax and I'm not going to miss it. Uh, so yeah, I, I might be checking that out, but you know, I am careful with my ADA, but thankfully it's only 10 ADA. So I will probably yeah, uh, a- mint, mint a couple. Yeah, I think I probably will too at that price. That's yeah. a nice, nice, easy entry, and it really can't go much lower than that. So no, exactly. A, yeah, exactly. Uh, next, we have Pets Are Us. Uh, this is one that I just kind of learned more about today. So I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I wouldn't be surprised if mm. you hadn't. Yeah, no, um, they're a new one for pet, me. Yeah, I I think they're new for a lot of people. Um, they only have 1,250 followers on Twitter, but I actually kind of like the look of them. The artist is called, um, what is it called? Reborns. So it's by an artist in LA who is a graffiti artist called Reborns. Mm. And it's a graffiti project. Do you know any other graffiti projects? There's the, the Mystic Monks maybe that comes to mind for me. Yep. A similar um, style. Yeah, so it's it's a similar style, but they are promising um, a, a meta, metaverse utility, which I think is interesting. So so I immediately kind of start thinking about, oh, graffiti in the metaverse. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I think, they, I think they have something here. And I've seen, you know, some community members you know, be being excited about about them. And and so so I thought, you know, I looked a little bit into them and I thought they were worth a mention. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I the first kind of first reactions looking at the website, I love they've got they're they're kind of simple yet complex. They've got kind of a, a very solid background, mm-hmm. um, like a pastel background, but then they've got some very interesting designs of things kind of all matched together. 
So I yeah. definitely could see. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if cult following is the right word, but you could. I could see some really pe- some people get really excited about this project and just yeah. mint a ton because they're like, I just this just resonates with me. Yeah, and and it is a niche niche market. Like I feel like you have a lot of fans of graffiti art, right? So I think yeah. it's going to appeal to a lot of people. So that's Friday, 2 p.m. UTC if you're on the whitelist. I'm not, of course. Saturday, 4 p.m. UTC for the public. Uh, 40 ADA for the whitelist, 55 ADA for the public. Can I ask you, Blake, what do you think about that concept of having different price for, you know, you know, a, a pretty drastically different price for whitelist compared to public? Um, on one on one hand, I get it, just because you want to reward the people who kind of followed you right away. It's a, it's a way to reward kind of OG, whatever whatever that means. Just people who are kind of interested in your project right away. But um, I'm not sure how much it detracts away from people who are like, I don't know if I want to spend the extra 15 in the public. Um, for me personally, if there was a project that I really liked, I don't know if that price difference would matter too much for me, but. If you're already on the fence on something and you re- and you realize you're going to be 15, 20, 25 ADA difference, then you might be like, ah, I'll just see what happens on the secondary because maybe, you know, the prices you could get something on the floor that, you know, you might be interested in. So exactly. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it, it it is that marketing or sales psychology uh, that comes into play. Like, I, I feel like if if you know that others received a 20% discount that you're not receiving, feels like less of a deal. For example, this one is 55 ADA for public. Even if all of them, all, you know, whitelist and public uh, would have had to pay 55 ADA, I probably would have minted more in that case than if some people got it for 30 at it because that gives an indi- like that indicates value that's uh that's one of those uh, factors that you kind of you take mental notes on like well, okay what is the value of this nft and i think if if some people are able to get it at a 20 30 percent discount like that to me i think that that is a pretty big factor um i, I so, think it yeah. is interesting though to to look at whitelists and see a couple examples like the mechanism genesis and the adenauts uh antidotes yep. where the whitelist is actually its own nft so if you wanted to get the discounted price and you were going to mint five or ten or whatever the whitelist allows or one whatever you can then either buy or sell that on the marketplace um and that that's a way to get into that discounted price if you're willing to put more up front and then you have a unique nft that only whitelist people have i don't know i i think that's I- an interesting play I actually like that a lot more because, you know, I understand that you want to reward those that support you early on, right? But grinding in the Discord, like that isn't realistic for everybody. So I, I'm okay with supporting by by paying 400 ADA early on before you launch. I can do mm-hmm. that. And but that and for a lot of projects that that isn't considered as highly as grinding in the Discord for some reason. So I'm I'm a fan of um, creating a separate NFT for the whitelist. I'll pay, you know, 50, 100 ADA, 200 ADA. Um, Woodlords was another example of where I did that. Um, mm. And and I'm supporting early on and I get a whitelist in return. So I, I think I think that that is a good method for a lot of projects. Um, anyway, bit of a bit of a rant there. Uh, <laughs> we want to yeah. tangent. Yeah, well, as... Yeah, as people decide and as pe- as this space just continues to mature, this just the entire idea of whitelist is interesting and then yep. how people do how people go about that whether they just say no white whitelist at all or they take the time and energy to make an additional NFT that um, symbolizes a whitelist. Just yep. in, just interesting different ideas and concepts people come up with. Absolutely. Uh, here's another one that you might not have heard of, the makers. Uh, this mm. is this is a, a small project. This collection is only see they only have 909 followers on Twitter, but I'm just I'm just a fan personally. So um, you know I've I've been in contact with the creator for for months. I know he's been working on this collection for four months. He's an architect. It's an architectural uh, mm. collection, and these are going to be basically uh metaverse ready homes which i think is pretty cool and i think they they look pretty great i mean he is an architect so only 600 of these 55 ada uh i just thought because i know the creator um you know and i like the nft i wanted to mention them uh so if you haven't uh heard of them blake 
you might want to check them out. Just um, gave them a follow. Oh, sweet. You got it. Whether or not you kind of like the idea of metaverse or if you think it's too early or whatever, like you just got you got to respect the time and effort that somebody puts in and just the, the level of quality and right, just and right off the bat, like the first video you can see there's a there's a lot of time put into it. I know there are I'm sure you're familiar with some of the other projects. I wouldn't have them off the top of my head, but it seems like there are some people that are kind of getting into this. OK, if metaverses are going to be big and projects like Pavia or other ones that will, they're just kind of bare land, flat land. OK, well, we can design some of the cool house stuff and then kind of just integrate it with the the one that's going to win in the end or the, the two that's that are going to win in the end. So I think it's a great it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that is the best, uh, the next big evolution uh, and, and just for projects as well, like not just build, not try to build their own metaverse from the ground up, but just yep. make your collection metaverse compatible uh, whenever we have set standards on Cardano, which I don't think we really have yet. Um, yeah, so the, the, yeah. the interesting point that I will make here, and I've heard other people make the same uh, I don't know if arguments the right word, but the same statement is what's going to be interesting is this, uh, at least the ones that are in this rotating uh, video, they all seem to have a similar style. So yeah. how does that style fit in with what um, I guess the idea of a metaverse is all these all these things are kind of coming as one. So what's mm -hmm. is there? Is it just everything going to look kind of weird and out of place because it's, you know, the space butt over here and the dead pixel that is just a little block walking around and then you're in this house that looks like it's you know, you know, I don't know. It's, it's an I interesting so. idea. I think yeah. so. I, I, because there's no central power, there's no central designer, you know, there's nobody really in charge of that. I think we're going to have a lot of different uh, assets with different style and designs, and it's going to look a little quirky. But I think think we'll, we'll just have to get used to that, I guess. But I don't know, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. It'll, so, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. The makers, they are dropping on Friday, 8 p.m. UTC, 55 ADA, only 600 of these. Uh, so check that out if you like. Uh, then mm -hmm. ADA Ninjas, like you mentioned, that's probably the biggest one, at least one of the biggest ones with uh, with Vegemates, I would say. Uh, and that's happening on Saturday, right? Um, I believe uh, so. Yeah, so, so that's 8 p.m. Saturday. I don't know if there's a whitelist. Uh, I, I might. I'm not seeing there, one. There is a, I know there is, um, like you get a discount if you have the previous, um, you know, NFTs from the previous two collections, you'll get a discount, I think 1% up to 20%. So that's cool, but it is 68 without the discount, 8,888. And what I like about these is the animation and the music. I, I'm sure mm. you've checked them out by now. Yeah. Just looks so good. I, I like it's it's cool that each of the different so there's if you're not familiar with Aiden Ninjas there's three different clans and they mm -hmm. each of the clans have had their own release but also each of the clans have their own different art style it's still still in the the anime style I guess you could say but then there's different types of anime drawing or yeah. uh, artwork I like this third version seems to be my favorite so far um, but that's I just agree, my opinion actually. I think they look really great. I agree, and I think that is very unique. Um, I don't. Is it the same artist in all with all collections? I I had an interview with them. I think it was back in. They might have been my first guest, like project guest mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. I think I remember them. To comment Zushan was commenting on how uh, varied the artist was and how much he was able to actually do, or he or she, I forget, how much they were able to do with the with the with their artistic talent. So I think it is the same one. Yeah. If I could guess that I I have that memory as well. So I think that at least the first two. So it would be strange if the, if now there was a different artist for the third one. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously the 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 music uh, is from a different artist. Um, I can't remember. Do you remember who made the music? It's it's um, I don't have the name off the top of my head, but it's a it's a group based out of L.A. It's a okay. music. It's a music label or like a popular uh, group out of LA that they yeah. hired. I'm just impressed with uh, Ninja. I mean, it's a big team. They're doing. They have big ambitions. You know, with with everything that they're doing. Uh, I have you know several of their music NFTs, for example, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 bullish on Ninjas uh, in the long run because I like to get into projects that have a long term vision. Right. Yeah. 
Yep, uh, love it. And then we then we have the King Tigers. Have you heard of them? They they are no. a three D. Um, they I would say that they have some traction. They have thirty five hundred followers on Twitter, and I I've seen them for, around now that I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think they're getting uh, closing in on six thousand uh, members on Discord, and they are launching uh, now on what is that Saturday? No, Sunday at twelve p.m. Uh, they haven't released when the the whitelist is going to be happening. Uh, they they gave out some whitelists during my stream uh, a couple of weeks ago during the Viking game. So you know I have I have a little bit of a soft spot for them. <laughs> uh, 80 Ada, yeah. and what I like is that it's only 3,333. It's, uh, it seems like the supply is matching demand right now. Um, yeah. And what is also unique is that they are going to be giving you 3D printing files and it's going to be have um, augmented reality capabilities and uh, metaverse uh, co compatibility, which which is cool. You know, that makes them a little bit more than just another 3D PFP collection, right? Because uh, it, right. it can be easy to get a little bit tired of those. Um, what do you think? Like first impressions? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I jumped into their roadmap on their website. I'm liking yeah. the idea here. It's quarter 322, so that's, you know, a, a ways away. But some, some mm -hmm. there's there's a statement about a 3D cardboard game with Tiger mm -hmm. Coins uh, NFT for holders. Um, you know, I, I think Cardopoly was one that's kind of tried that their hand in what what g board games or that type of stuff could look like. So that, that makes me interested. Um, and the art looks clean 3d art you know always looks really nice if it's done well so um i don't know if they, they also have like a vr looking thing that says metaverse on it for their on yeah. their website for the roadmap are they making their own metaverse or are they integrating it with something else i don't know if you know that or not but um yeah, interesting my understanding was that they're integrating with with a metaverse uh they're not creating their own but that's actually a good question something that i didn't actually verify uh, but that yeah. was my understanding. Yeah, let, let me know in the comments, guys, uh, if you know more about the King Tigers. But like I said, that's happening on Sunday uh, noon. Uh, keep an eye out for an exact time if you're on the whitelist. 80 Ada. So that's it for the for the drops. I'm definitely most excited about ninjas and um, and junkies. So mm -hmm. do you agree or what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I my personality well i'm in cnfts so i'm already pretty i'm okay with risk but i think what we've seen is uh usually uh the projects that have been around longer you can more easily gauge how invested and how real they actually are so yeah. um if you look at the top 10 i did my weekly live stream on thursday if you look at the top 10 i think three or four are brand new for this week on the seven day so you know, maybe they do what they say they're going to do, but it's just so hard to know, especially with, you know, doxxed or undoxed teams. So it would make sense for me to also agree that Veggie Mates, which have been around for at least a few months and Aided Ninjas all the way back in September uh, to be the ones that are the most exciting because they've already seen success in the blockchain space and um, they're both doxxed teams. Um, and they, yeah, they, they have a, they have a track record of success. So it's much more easy to be like, I'm willing to give my ADA to it as opposed yeah. to maybe a cash grab, you could say. It, it, it's definitely lower risk, uh, Mint, mm -hmm. I would say. It's lower risk, but, you know, sometimes I feel like as DGENs, we, we jump on the high risk, high reward opportunities. So I would say the junkie, because also we know, you know, we know the floor price has been steady for Vegemates, for example, at 80 to 100 ADA, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are not going to expect the the uh, floor price of junkies to be 500 ADA, right? But there's that yes. slight possibility of a new project, you know, mooning. Yes. Uh, so I, I feel like new projects have that in their favor, but uh, personally, I, I like to limit my risk. I like to get into projects that I think might be around in a couple of years. So, so yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I'm also uh, more excited about uh, Vegemates and Ninjas. Um, now, what stood out to you now that we are going to uh, go over some of the latest news in the space? What's been standing out to you before uh, I tell you what stood out to me? <laughs> 
I, th I think, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, it's interesting to still see the success of eight projects. Um, mm. I think that there is a group of people who wish we could move past it. And there also seems to be a group of people that are willing to spend a crazy amount of ADA and they don't care. And they say the narrative is stronger than the negative reactions to eight projects. Also, um, people are seeing went back to kind of the track record of success, people are seeing what projects are doing well and they're uh, adjusting it and finding inspiration from it and then using it to start their own projects. So those become yeah. successful because there is a there's this idea of success on this side. So I missed this project. So I'm going to I'm going to buy into this project at when it's at a lower price. Yep. Those are the interesting things that I've seen. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense right now. I just typed in ape here um, on OpenCNFT. And we got Swag Ape Club number six on the 24 hour. Uh, then we got the Ape Dow, we got the Ape Society, and the Cappins by Ape Society, Ape Nation, Aping Riot Club, I mean, and on and on and on. Um, I have accepted it as a part of reality here mm -hmm. in, in the NFT space. Um, I'm not really personally offended by it, you know? So, and I've actually bought some of them, but. Um, yeah, overall, I'm just, you know, I get ape fatigue. Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, and, I think so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so I can't just because it's also about fun. You know, uh, it is a personal thing when you buy a PFP to me, at least in some cases. So sometimes I'm just not very motivated to get into the new um, new ape projects. Yeah, uh, I, I tend to have the philosophy of I have to really I, I'm for me personally, everybody has their own different investing or their different NFT strategies, but I tend to take the, the track of, I wanna be around for a long time. I don't wanna necessarily go too deep on a mint and then get burned by it or rug pulled or whatever. I know there's a lot of reward in that, like we've said before, but I'm trying to be around for a long time. I don't have, I, I talk a lot about CNFTs, but I really don't have that much ADA to spend on them. So mm -hmm. I really try to watch <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm investing. So, and I think for people that are newer, this this ape fatigue has been around for a long time. When uh, Chilled Kongs was coming out in December, so five, six yeah. months ago, people were already saying, why are there so many ape projects? And we've seen success from Chilled Kongs, success from Ape Society and, and Clay, Clapes and all these other ones. So the, 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 the desire is still there. So Yeah. Guess who bought six Clapes? <laughs> exactly. You did. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, to be fair, they have they had Viking helmet traits so you know of course I, you gotta they, stay with the, you gotta stay on brand yeah can't resist that um anyway so i you know speaking of rugs and and taking risks you obviously heard about terra and luna mm -hmm. uh, i hope you were not affected or anybody else Was that not. you know okay that's that's good uh it's just just scary like there was it had a market cap of over 40 billion that's just oh, erased I mean, crazy. that is that is just crazy. So that's been kind of the biggest story in crypto. Uh, but in Cardano, I, th I thought this was really cool. I think Charles um, tweeted about did. The, the Cardano flag uh, being on, on top of the world, literally. And I, I thought this was just kind of like a like a fun, fun, feel good story to talk about. Yes. Right. Yep. I think uh, I think the guy mentioned something about sending it to Charles, the flag, after they come down and he'll send it. And Charles is like, no, don't do that. Come see me in person and like hand it to me or like whatever. It's too valuable. Um, yeah. And then he said something about him being like he's going to go. Charles is going to go to space sometime in the next few years. And so he'll take it to the space with him or something. So to it is moon. a cool kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. To the moon. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just fun. Uh, then we saw, I saw that Stale announced that he yeah. left CNFT.io and focusing on Planet Pals. It, this surprised me a little bit. Um, I mean, I, I guess, I guess it's understandable, but I, I guess I didn't really realize how much ambition he has for Planet Pals. What do you think? Mm. I, you know, I've, I've always heard, heard of Planet Pals. I think. I guess going back to CNFT.io, I don't know a ton about them, but I feel like Stale was the last good thing that came out of CNFT.io. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, like, yeah, just my opinion. Um, 
when a lot of stuff was going on about, you know, why aren't we innovating? Where are the royalties? All that kind of stuff. Stale was kind of the person who took a lot of the heat. And it seemed like from, it seemed like he didn't have a lot of power to change that. Mm -hmm. And so the sign, he obviously made it sound really nice. I'm leaving. I loved what I did, all that stuff. I think this is a sign that CNFT is not going to change, .io is not going to change. And they're just going to keep doing what they're doing. And so there's a reason why JPEG has kind of taken, JPEG store has kind of taken a lot yeah. of the market share. Um, I like Stale, I think he's great, and but I don't have any Planet Pals, but it makes me interesting, interested to see what he can do with it. Yeah, Even it more actually made, more time me, it. made me kind of start looking at Planet Pals a little bit more seriously and, and consider uh, picking up a couple because I, yeah, I agree. I like Stale uh, and I, I got a feel, I don't have any inside knowledge, but I got a feeling that he was not the fundamental real problem um, yes. of, of, of them losing so much market share. Um, then we had, do you, are you in uh, Cornucopius or uh, Yummy? You got me into Kopi when you were on my channel. Uh, oh, you were talking about how you okay. had bought Kopi through Pancake Swap, and I was like, I got to do that. So I did it. Now they're on ADA. So I'm like, dang it, I should have just waited. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but um, I do cheaper, own some Kopi cheaper, token. Um, yeah, cheaper with BNB on the BNB chain. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, then yeah. maybe I should arbitrage that. Um, but uh, yeah, I love Kopi. I think they're the, probably the strongest metaverse, per, uh, with, even they haven't done a land sale yet. Um, I got a Javelin from being in the mm -hmm. queue and then they gave them mm -hmm. all for free. So I was like happy with that. I should have, yes. uh, you know, just kind of a no brainer to pick up more when they were 50 because the psychological aspect of that was hilarious that people were just dropping them for like 40 ADA. Um, yeah. But I didn't, don't, I didn't scoop up more when I could have. <laughs> Don't get me started on that because I thought I, I I thought I was so smart selling mine for ninety and I was like oh you know people because I I knew people would be dumping them because I I yeah. anticipated yep. but I thought it was gonna go down to like thirty or something uh, and then I just kind of forgot to check again and then they were like two hundred something and I was like oh okay yeah that was a big L for me uh, but yeah mm. just a reminder then to stake your uh, copy uh, you can do that now. Because uh, they even open. even on BNB, yep, they open for that today. Okay. Uh, so nice. you, you might want to check that out. I I did that this morning. I mean, it's not not fantastic returns, but uh, it's better than just having it sit there, right? And then yummy. And then on yeah, I was gonna say. And then on the yummy side, I have yeah, I minted a yummy universe. I minted two. Flip that was like near kind of my earlier days, but I minted two or three, and then flipped flipped one when the price went kind of crazy after mint. Um, and I've been holding the the other one for a long time, so it's it's got a a decent amount. It's an OG one, and I have a few of the win, the spoopy ones. Um, but I'm yeah, I need to get the staking. I haven't done it yet today, but that's that's huge. Yeah, I'm I'm getting more and more into Yummy. Uh, you know, I think it's I think the floor is going to go to one k at some point this year. Not financial mm. advice, uh, but you know, I I just I think they are just slowly kind of going. I don't know. They they are building quality stuff, and if you if you do the staking of your Naru, like it, it's just so smooth. I think everything is just very well done, and yeah. So so I I think I have four Yummies right now and three Series One. Uh, so yeah, got close to 100k Yummy, and can expect I think 30 or 40k from from staking. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, um, I, I I will say I, I I would be remiss if I didn't say it, um, and I'm not trying to fud, but I I was I got worried because there there, there is a level of risk just so that everybody knows. Of course, because I did the min swap thing because everybody's like, go do the min swap farming, min swap farming, and there was a potential for me to lose everything because there was a you know there was a problem with the code and somebody mm -hmm. could have potentially taken 150 million dollars you know just and, and took it away, but luckily I think it was Wing Riders who. Uh, was able to alert MinSwap of, yeah. of the issue. Now, I, I'm not saying that Yummy Universe has a problem with their code or their staking mechanism, but you are giving your Yummy to a different pool. It's out of your possession, mm -hmm. and there is potential. I don't know. I, I, so I'm, I, there's part of me that's like, what if everybody? <laughs> what if everybody's yeah. Yummy just like gets lost? I don't know. But it just makes you. It makes you more hesitant after the MinSwap uh, scare, I guess. It's a good point, and I, you know, I think it's worth always mentioning that, or keeping it, keeping that in mind. Uh, there are vulnerabilities. Uh, thankfully, Cardano hasn't really experienced an, a successful right. attack. I feel like 
uh, good actors have always found the vulnerability first uh, before somebody could abuse it. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, the, you know, no technology is perfect. And I, I think you got to be aware of the risks that you're taking. Um, and, you know, and then personally have a hardware wallet and, and take care of your, your NFTs and, and crypto that way. Um, mm -hmm. But then we, last week, did you mint any of these? We had Adonauts, we had Introverse and Onboard. They all sold out and they were kind of pretty big projects, right? Yeah, they were big projects. I had Adonauts on the channel uh, previously. Mm -hmm. I'd been following yeah. them since uh, Lovelace had been around. I mm -hmm. was actually out this weekend. I was on a trip, so, um, and I, I guess you could have still minted from mobile, but um, I, I haven't actually set up an eternal wallet yet. So I was on your, I was in the Euroi days and then not, you, anyways. Um, so I actually didn't mint any of these. Um, I'm actually surprised. I'm seeing a ton of stuff about Onboard. A uh, ton mm -hmm. of kind of big names in the space are scooping up a lot of those. So, yep. um, and then ha has Adenauts revealed their uh, collection yet? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Maybe. Um, so you say you didn't mint any of those? Uh, I did not. Okay. Well, if I'm, I'm thinking about having maybe a little bit of a reveal party or something, because I, I think it's pretty cool that um, I feel like it's, it's pretty unique how they are doing the reveals. Like, I don't know, 10, maybe 10 days after or whatever, however long it takes. I don't know yet. Uh, they haven't revealed it. But uh, it's an interesting concept, and I think it's been working pretty well for them so far. I feel like the, you know, just looking at the floor price too. I think that they're extending the hype uh, surrounding yes. the project. Yep. Um, so I think I'm I'm very optimistic for that project. Plus, we've seen the uh, the previews. I don't think it's going to surprise anybody, and and it's going to tank the floor price. I think people know kind of what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I minted th uh, three. I wanted to mint more, but going back to the the whitelist thing, uh, the, it was twenty ADA more expensive um, on uh, during the public. But I, and I actually had one of those NFTs, uh, the antidote that yep. is supposed to get you a whitelist. But then you still have to register your address, and I didn't do that because uh. I never do. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I missed out on the whitelist and I was feeling a little sad about it. So instead of minting 10, like I was planning on doing, I minted three. Uh, so yeah, I guess it does have an effect. Yeah, that's a little bit rough. I did also have a whitelist and I guess it, part of me not doing my my entire research or not paying attention to the interview, I don't know, I, I'm guessing Bourbon said it. I thought it was only five for the whitelist um, and I wasn't thinking it was 10. So I actually sold for leading up to the hype, I sold my antidote to get mm -hmm. some more liquidity. So mm -hmm. I, I took that approach, but then I'm like, okay, but I sold it for, I think it was like six or 700. But if the floor is at a hundred, I could have, you know, minted 10 and I would have more. Yeah. So I, I thought it was yeah. five and it ended up being 10, but yeah, that was just my, you know, not, not doing my own research, not doing enough. Yep. It happens. Uh, introverse, yep. they also sold out, but they had some issues, uh, with their mint. Um, Pretty serious issues actually um you know they did sell out and i think they're going to recover from it pretty quickly because of that um what was but, the yeah. issue I, I didn't i'm i'm new to that uh so first of all they had just some major delays and i experienced that i sat here while my kids were crying downstairs at my at my computer uh waiting yep. for an hour uh for the for the mint to start uh, and you know but things happen i guess but uh Another thing that was probably more concerning was just, and I think it's still like that in my wallet, I can't see the NFT and the metadata was, oh. was completely messed up. So they are fixing that. Uh, and I, I, like I said, I, I really like the collection. I think they look great. There's a, you know, Viking, Viking squad, custom Viking squad trade in there that I'm a fan of, of and I need to get my hands on. Um, so they'll recover, but I think it was worth mentioning. And th like you said, on board, I have four of those. Um, I I had on board on my channel on stream maybe a couple of weeks ago. You know, great guys, a connoisseur, salad, and Joshua, Squashua. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, you've been uh, you've obviously noticed it. Fahad Duke and others. I changed my PFP today. I just feel it just nice. feels like a thing happening today, right? Yep. So congrats uh, yeah, I think to Drams, all of these Drams things. does his Drams. classic screenshot of like a mm -hmm. hundred and some. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yep. And then uh, Ninja, did you see the game reveal today? I didn't see the reveal. I, I knew that they, I saw their, um, their fancy roadmap picture, their updated roadmap. That looked really cool, but I did not see the, I did not see the game reveal. I'm excited yeah, about it. it. It's very cool. And the game actually, uh, just a little sneak peek that I, I was seeing just looked, looked pretty cool. Like looked pretty uh, impressive actually. So yeah, oh, yeah I, I, I like think, that. I think definitely check that out. Like I said, we already talked about ninjas and, and how impressed I am with, with the things they're doing and like they have pretty great ambitions, big team. So just another another thing that they are are putting out there um, and uh, I think it's worth mentioning. I, I also appreciate how transparent they are because mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's <laughs> water under the bridge at this point, but their mint didn't also, their first mint didn't go That's as right. well as they were hoping, but they did like a, a AMA for like hours afterwards, talking, reassuring people were still they here. So well. They handled it super well. And then they, I think they did an update recently because they met, they sold out when the price of ADA was higher. I don't know how they, you know, how much they sold or how much they kept, whatever, but they had a big team and then they made an announcement saying, we're not going to be able to keep everybody. So we're, you know, we're trimming our team, but all of it is out in the open. They're they're I'm in their discord and I pop it, pop in every once in a while and like hardcore people in there. I don't know. Just, I, yeah, I enjoy everything they do and. Yep. They, really they, they don't get the love as approach. much love. Nope. I agree. Uh, did you notice the token ref oh. story? Yeah. I, Tell I'm kind of confused. I really am because I think a lot of people aren't confused. Yeah. It, it just seemed like it was like a one-off tweet. I, I saw the tweet. It was basically like mm -hmm. people are hating on us or whatever, m blaming us for stuff. And then they just disappear. Um, but if you go back to the, if you go all the way back, OG, um, I, I, there might, I don't know if they, I don't know if it was pool.pm or not, but like Cardano bits mint token ref was the only way you could see anything about mm -hmm. your, about your, uh, Cardano bit. So like, everybody's going to token ref, you know, looking at the stats, taking screenshots, doing the selling on discord. But like, that's like, that's a, that's a sad loss. I think in terms of just so the history too. of Cardano NFTs. Yeah. Um, I was confused because to me, it almost seemed like they were using like that wasn't the real reason why they were yep. giving up uh, or or shutting down, I should say. So, you know, people blaming them for, I don't know what it was, like the collapse of ADA price or I, I don't I don't yeah. actually know what it was. Uh, so it just seemed a little bit odd. Uh, I, I had a feeling that it was it had to do with something else. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think in the comments? Let us know. But it, is, either way, it's sad to see him go, right? Because they were OGs, yes. they had a lot of respect, and um, yeah, I wish I wish it would have ended in a different way. I think it's there's also there was also a similar story with Cardano kids, and they kind of said a lot of stuff yeah. about how people are fudding them and you know all this kind of stuff, and then it ended up that Pavia bought out Cardano kids. Yeah, however how you think about that, but it was weird that it, it's they both seemed somewhat similar. I'm not saying they're connected, but that was another example of something in the Corona NFT space that True. was like original project or group. People are blaming them for stuff, so they, they so they so they leave or they get bought out or whatever. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, w whether you're an individual or a project, just do you. There are going to be idiots on Twitter. There are going to be assholes, trolls everywhere on the internet. Just do you don't even read or acknowledge those uh, people sending you those messages like not worth your time. So please we don't speak let from that experience. affect you. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> had plenty of those. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Artano, have you I had Artano on uh, on the show, on my show, on my Twitch stream uh, last week, and I've just been a fan. That's why I wanted to talk to them. I've been a fan of theirs, their platform, their marketplace, and they have a lot of stuff happening. Um, and right now, there's the Summerfest where these uh, projects like Yummy, they're they're auctioning off one of ones, which, mm. which are really cool, I think. Uh, and they have. They have a lot of other artists um, participating in this. Yeah, I think Ugly Bros, some other big projects are participating in this. So, so that was pretty cool to see. They have a, a pretty interesting um, 
I mean, I feel like they're pioneers when it comes to smart contract auctions in the first place. Yep. And what's happening right now with this auction with a starting bid of 16,400 ADA, it's super cool. It's a collab with Akamai, which is a huge internet provider, uh, basically visualizing the use of the internet. Wow. Which is really cool. Uh, this is just a preview of it. It's going to be a live stream, the actual NFT. Uh, so yeah, very unique, interesting stuff. And uh, and then the final piece of news from them was that they got funding for their NFT Maker 2.0, basically, which is going to allow them to create a programmable NFT Minter, which is pretty cool. We talked a little bit about that on my stream on Friday. So yeah, yeah. they're doing some exciting things. Have you ever used or checked out Artano? I haven't used them, but you've... On, on your streams and stuff, you'll go to Artano. So I'll, I've heard about them from you. I think that um, most people, and I guess I could say in, including myself, because I haven't bought one from them, they're interested in the liquidity. They want to get the flip. They want to, you know, do all this kind of stuff. But if you are, if you're coming from the high art or like, you know, traditional art community, that's your website because you don't yes. care if there's liquidity for this project or, uh, it's just like, hey, I really love how this looks. I, I'm seeing one right now on the website that's like a slow pan of like this dragon or something in like this wooded area. Like, yeah, that's amazing. For 350 ADA, that looks super cool. But you yeah. know that you're never going to be able to sell that. Or no, I won't say never, but it's it'll be harder to sell. Yeah, it's um, more like buying a painting for your house. Right. It's like if, if uh, my parents, they've spent, you know, thousands of dollars on art for their home. If yeah. I ask them if they were like, okay, uh, Thor, you know, show us what NFTs are all about. We want to get into it, see what the NFT art is like, digital art. We have a screen in our in our home, Samsung. We got a Samsung um, TV that is made for showing uh, digital art. Yeah. I would send them to Artano. I would not send them to JPEG store. I love JPEG right. store, but, but I would send them to Artano and I think they would find something really kind of up their alley there. So I think they're focusing on a different niche and I yep. think there's room for both, right? Absolutely. And speaking of uh, JPEG store, Blake, I mean, I love Blake. Uh, yeah, it's a great name. By the way, I was shout out also for having a picture of Iceland here. Yeah, it's a great oh, name, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, so he's got a uh, uh, header uh, from uh, landscape in Iceland. I, I believe it's Iceland. Correct me if I'm wrong, Blake, because I know, of course, you're watching. Um, so, yeah, I just saw that he is he's actually communicating with his with his um, ex uh, co-workers, I guess, trying to convince them to to support Cardano NFTs, which mm -hmm. I think, I mean, obviously that's, it's just a DM, but you know, it's, it's great to see leaders in the space actually kind of speak up for, for Cardano NFTs, you know, yeah. don't you think? I, I do. I'm actually curious and maybe you can help fill in the gaps there. Uh, Insta so it's an Instagram thing where they have supported Ethereum and Solana NFTs. What does that mean supported? Is it similar to like a Twitter where there's special border or a special thing in your profile? Uh, yeah, that's actually a good question. Uh, I haven't really looked into it because <laughs> I've only been using Twitter since entering the NFT space. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, <laughs> so, but I imagine that it is kind of like Twitter where you can get information uh, about the NFT and maybe a link to the to the listing and, and stuff like that. I don't, you know, and, and maybe a little, little slightly different border or tick. I don't know for sure. If you guys know, let, let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. Uh, false idols. Did you meet any false idols? I did not. I I did like the art. I I tried to mint it and it was already you know yeah it was it was gone. Sold out so fast. I was trying to trying to get in it. Yep. I I minted a few and, and I have a few. So um, I'll always be transparent about that. But I think they are a big project that a lot of people are interested in, and uh, they partnered up with Nexus Cognitive, which is a Web three agency that is also working with Cycler and Clumsy Ghost. So I thought that mm. was pretty noteworthy because i like both of those projects cycler in particular i mean one of the most in my personal opinion one of the most underrated projects on cardano um but you know obviously the 250 mint price deterred a lot of uh people especially you know the the degens um yep. <laughs> so uh yeah i thought, thought it was interesting just worth the mention but 
we don't really have like I don't really know much more about about it than that. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, that, I'm not. I'm not sure either. Yeah. But I do. I do. I don't own a cycler, but I've I've been watching and 169 floor for for the bikes. I'm like, man, mm -hmm. that might be might be time to do some do some moving there. I think so because I believe in the and the team, not financial advice, and considering their ambitions to be to to create you know this app this cycler app that it's what is it a uh, bike to earn <laughs> or yes. move to earn whatever they call it i think it's such a unique concept that i you know you are buying into history there uh on yes. cardano i think that they'll be the the first to do something like that so yeah thor, thor is going to be uh streaming from his bicycle he's got his yeah. phone on a little stand and he'll be pedaling to earn exactly. some cycler <laughs> looking forward to it good content right there yeah that's right <laughs> Uh, then we have Pains NFT. They they used to be uh, named Growing Pains, but they rebranded mm. to Pains, and they are dropping uh, a season two or the second collection called Para Pains. Para Pains. I don't know how to pronounce it. And they just gave a little sneak peek of it, and I thought it looked like I expected. It looked pretty pretty awesome. Um, so we have a few clay projects now. You know, we have obviously Clay Nation. Uh, we have, speaking of apes, we have clapes, uh, and I think a couple of more, but I've always been a fan of the quality of, of paints. I, I just think they, um, you know, they're artists, I've, I've highlighted their artists uh, in, in my newsletter before, because, you know, she's, she's kind of like famous in her industry, in her very niche industry of, mm. um, uh, she is, she's just a very skilled uh, artist i think anyway so they they just gave us this sneak peek and i think it looks pretty good yeah uh then we have i'm sure you've heard of, heard of iconicos i think you actually yeah. you know you work with them like pretty much all of us i think <laughs> at yeah. this point they've, 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 collabed yeah, they've got with, some good marketing and yeah collabs. yeah they've they've they're collabing with pretty much every good project and and a lot of a lot of us um, c content creators and yeah mm -hmm. I I wrote here that they can take uh, other projects can take a page from their marketing playbook. What do you think they are doing that that's working so well? Well, I think that <clears throat> a lot of project creators are starting with zero or little money, and so. They want to get the capital up front to do what they want to go do. So yeah. I have this NFT project uh, and I'm hoping to get 500,000 ADA or 300,000 ADA for a sellout. Then I have this roadmap that's going to be able to, I'm going to take the funds from my sellout to then go do it. And it, what it seems like with this project, I don't know a ton about them, but it seems like they have a ton of capital up front. They either yes. got like VC money or Mm -hmm. They're just wealthy individuals. And so they're like, we want this thing to get going quickly, uh, whether um, it's paying uh, a group. I, I don't know if all of their stuff is real. I don't, I don't know if they're doing like engagement stuff. Um, I can't speak to that, but it seems like a lot of their stuff is just super popular and everybody's yeah. really interested in it. So I actually uh, haven't seen any major red flags in that sense. Um, but there but is a website that has like... <clears throat> It tells you if there's like bots or not. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I haven't checked the website, but that I would be interesting to see. Yeah. I haven't checked that either. Uh, but, you know, uh, considering all the collabs and just uh, I, to me, I just get the sense that this is somewhat like it, it is. I wouldn't say forced, but it is, you know, they are going hard into marketing and it's just paying off. That's kind of how I'm feeling about yep. it right now. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that I've seen any red flags or anything like that. Uh, I think, I think they are gonna be a very popular project uh, because they opened their Discord. They had like a couple of thousand people join in a matter of Crazy. Uh, seconds or minutes. Uh, but then another project that I'm, I'm um, intrigued by is this one. I don't know how to pronounce it. Raison d'être. <laughs> I don't know, huh. but they also opened their Discord uh, this week and gave this little sneak peek of a, a Pendulum collab, which I thought mm. looked pretty sick. Um, so I just 
kind of wrote about these two projects as projects that are doing really well with marketing. We don't know their drop dates yet, but people are talking about them. Uh, so I thought yep. that was worth a mention. They 3,600 uh, followers, and I, I think that number is going up pretty pretty fast. Nice. Uh, had, had you heard of, heard of them before? No, no, and I'm I'm still I still need to get into Pendulum to be honest. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit behind, but yeah, <laughs> so many so many great You're projects. Always, but yeah, those interesting. We're always behind in the CNFT space. That's yeah, just exactly. that's just how it goes. <laughs> exactly. And then uh, then the final story here was Pavia. They gave a uh, gave a nice little preview. Did you see that preview? Yeah. So they um, they released this little preview of a uh, metaverse asset which you know a lot of people are excited about because a lot of people are excited about pavia right yes um so yeah looks cool but i don't have any pavia and i've seen a lot of cool metaverse assets so i'm just still waiting for the metaverse to become more real i'm not as excited about just seeing seeing assets whether it's from pavia or other projects I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me. Uh, so so tell me uh, that I'm wrong in the comments. Uh, what do you think, Blake? Well, I was actually just saying on my live stream on Thursday about the lack of communication. And I guess I should have just say, said that more often because now they like, I, like, I think it was like the moment I recorded that they came out about like, we're still building, we're still growing. And everybody's like, thank you for the communication. I'm like, they literally just like typed a sentence. Um, but okay, uh, that's great to hear from them. And then they then they release these. So I don't know. I have one Pavia. I bought around 400 just because I thought, you know, it would be a decent time. Case. They're now down to mm -hmm. 275, which I think, mm -hmm. you know, this, their support level was 300. So now they're, I mean, if you've been wanting to get in, I think this is a great time. But you know, obviously yeah. they're still building. It's just similar to what you were saying about the marketing efforts of Iconicos or the other ones like, there's just not really a lot being said. There's a lot being done, but it's hard for just the average retail investor to get to continually stay excited about a yeah. project when, you know, it's once in a blue moon where we're getting something like this. So, you know, exactly. I have yep. one Pavia, but I'm not going to buy more until I see more. Yep. Uh, I agree with you. I'm, I went. It was. It, is it still my biggest sale? Yeah, it is still my biggest sale. My Pavia estate probably sold mm. it for too cheap in retrospect. But you know that's that's how it is when you take profits. You rarely take profits at the absolute top. Mm -hmm. um, so I sold my estate for seven thousand five hundred, uh, and nice. I'm just happy with it. And you know took profits, and I'm out of that project and move into moved into uh, cornucopias. Yep. Uh, um, now, those were the major headlines. Did we forget anything, Blake? Anything uh, that I forgot? On my I, don't, list I think those are the main ones. It's a good, okay. it's a good list. So the, the last thing that I want to talk about here are uh, is my CNFT radar. I'm sure you have one. If you don't have it all written down, you have it mentally. I just started writing mine down. Uh, these are the projects that we don't have mint dates for yet, but you know, you're definitely kind of checking their Twitters once in a while. You know, check in their discords once in a while just to see what's going on because there's something about them that intrigues you. We already talked about uh, raison d'être. <laughs> I I don't even know what language that is. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna stop trying to. I'm just gonna call them raisin. Raisin. Um, we already yeah. talked about them. But the other three are Catalyst Studio, Joshua Hoffin, and Ada Kuma NFT. Have you heard of any of these? No. No, they're they're kind of um, I would say yeah, kind of. They're like, on the come up. Yes, I, I don't think a lot of a lot of people have heard of them, and usually I would you know come across them on Twitter and just you know move on. But now I'm writing them down, and and so I can talk about them right now. Um, so Catalyst, it doesn't take much first of all to to get on my list, and the reason why they got on my list is just because they these look pretty cool. <laughs> Mm. Uh, no, no further analysis here than these look uh, pretty awesome. I think uh, that that's pretty much the only. They have 638 followers. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. If you know more about them, but when I was reading about them, I think they might be some sort of platform to help artists kind of get into the space. I guess maybe similar concept to Onboard. I, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just like the look of these, so I put them on here. 
Then we have Joshua Hoffin. I put him on here because I don't see a lot of photography NFTs. Do you have any, do you hear much about photography NFTs, Blake? No. No. I think, I think I've actually talked with, uh, talked with him before. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This guy. Yeah. Um, he's got some interesting stuff. I'm not personally into like horror stuff, but you can, you can yeah. appreciate the quality for sure. Yes. That's the same, same here. It's not my style or, you know, my cup of tea per se, but just, just artistically, like, uh, I think it's all pretty much no photo manipulation, which is unbelievable. Mm. It's just, you know, mostly, um, there's just a photo of what's there. So it's, they, they build this in real life uh, using costumes and props and all that. So good quality photography NFT, which I am just happy to see. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, we have Ada Kuma NFT. Um, and I just put them on here because I saw that they were getting a little bit of hype and looks decent quality 3D. Might also not be my cup of tea, but I put things on my list that I think could become um, popular. And even if it's just a flip potential, I put them on here. Yep. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep following Ada Kuma NFT because I've I've been seeing more and more people talk about them. And then I put Viking Squad on there, and uh, we won't talk about that. Um, maybe some other time. Join the Viking Squad. I'll say it for you. Thank you. Get in there. Thank Thank get into you, the yeah. viking squad discord thousand strong and growing exactly and and blake i'll put all of your info in the in the description uh your discord so now we've kind of covered the biggest things uh, in my newsletter what are you doing these days in terms of investing or just you know how are you spending your time in the cnft space yeah um as i mentioned earlier i'm much more um looking to get deeper into the already established pro projects. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a space bud that I bought a while ago that I'm, you know, up on that I'm just going to keep holding. Yeah. You know, that's my biggest bag. Um, I have some other pro. I mean, there, there is a, the, the new project that kind of caught my eye that is still a long ways away. I, I love kind of the play to earn stuff. So the chains of war, um, so I minted, mm -hmm. I minted a few of those when that mm -hmm. came out, they were asking for a lot of ADA, but they sold out within, I think 48 ADA? hours, they were hundred ADA for 10,000. So they, they asked yeah. for a million and they got it in 48 hours. Um, so talking with that team got me excited about that. Won't be ready till 23, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm much more of a long-term holder. Yeah. Um, I've taken, I've taken a little bit of profits and, and just kind of been moving them into bigger ones. Um, okay. my time is spent a lot on. Um, <laughs> I, I, it seems like you do a really good job looking for the really new stuff. Um, I, I will, I also, you know, do this part-time. So I'm kind of in my discord and focusing on, uh, the top 10 NFTs for the week. Um, so I'm, I'm normally checking open CNFT seven day top 10. So if it's hard for me to see some of the newer projects, if they're not, you know, kind of hitting that list and then, mm -hmm. you know, seal society or clapes mm -hmm. or safari squad. That's when I start to look and say, okay, I'm going to be talking about them for this video. So I need to at least be a little bit educated on, on what they're doing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I, I tend to spend my time, a lot of it in long-term projects. And then if something's new, if it's in the top 10, then I'll, then I'll give some effort to it. That's honestly not a bad, bad approach. Uh, I think during, because I mean, we are in a bear market and a general bear market uh, when it comes to crypto and, um, you know, just a general assets markets, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty rough. And uh, yeah. I've actually been a little bit surprised. I've been talking about this on my channel for the past four or five weeks, how I'm taking profits, how I'm preparing for a cool down period. And here we are, but I'm gonna be honest, it's not been as rough in CNFTs right. as I expected. Um, yep. it's, it's like the floor prices have been holding pretty strong. Like, did, did that surprise you considering where ADA is right now? Yeah, it's a little bit surprising. It was it was also interesting just because we've never it seemed like when CNFTs were really starting, we were kind of just riding the bull market with NFTs and everybody was kind of speculating on, OK, well, if ADA loses half its value, like it was at a dollar a month ago, now it's at 50 cents. Mm -hmm. Would that make NFTs go double 
or would it make them trade sideways or would it dip them? And it seems like as ADA has been going down, NFTs have been going sideways. Yes. At least at least the bigger projects. And so that, that's an interesting, you know, the theory would be if you had conviction, you would just be buying a ton right now. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't I, seem to be the case. I, I never bought into that. I actually yeah. thought it would be the the reverse. Like people reverse. people who were you know, a little bit newer in the space, they would just be like selling my ADA piece out. Uh, I'm just going to go back to, um, you know, mining fiat and living my life. Uh, yeah. That's what I thought. But yeah, you're right. I think it's probably been a mixed bag. Maybe some of the, the whale, some of the bigger, more committed um, players, they are just loading up on ADA and can buy blue chips cheap. And that's kind of been my strategy. Um, I've been I've been trying to take profits for the past few weeks on the projects that I'm like, eh, you know, these are high risk, not so sure about long term potential. Yeah. And then kind of, you know, buying, buying a yummy, one more yummy, uh, buying, you know, uh, some project. And I'm really trying very hard to only mint one or two projects a week. It's very hard. Yeah. Uh, I think I've already, I've already um, hit your quota. For this. Yeah, because I I'm into introverts on board, um, and eight or not. I, eight or not. So so that's three. But you know these are all projects that I like a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I'm trying to be very picky with the new projects that I get into. Yeah, the the one thing that I'm really looking forward to, and I think a lot of people are, is Cornucopia's land sale. So yes. I've been trying to be unemotional, work on my unemotional uh, NFT collecting sell some that have a decent value, but mm -hmm. you're not sure where they're going to go mm -hmm. and just start filling a stack for cornucopias mm -hmm. to try to mint. I don't think the best strategy is to try to buy on secondary right after the land sale because that's when everybody's really excited about it. Um, but yeah. yeah, and then just to have a stack set aside for cornucopias to try to scoop up as many of the, the land uh, sales as possible because as we've seen, metaverse projects typically do very well. Yeah. Um, so trying to prepare in advance for whenever that happens. Yeah, that's a good reminder to kind of think more than a couple of days ahead of time and, and have yeah. a have more of a medium to long term strategy. I think I think that's a, a very good idea. I'm, I'm going to do the same. Um, I don't really know what the whitelist uh, situation is looking for that. Um, for cornucopias, yeah, you, for cornucopias. Uh, bubble jets and the javelins are whitelist spots. Also, okay. if you were an OG in their Discord, you have some whitelist uh, potential. Um, so, okay. and then there's going to be some form of like you have to be in the Discord no matter what. Mm -hmm. So then it depends on how many days you've been in the Discord. There's an announcement on their on their page. But I have a javelin and I've linked my wallet. You have to do the wallet linking thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I don't know what it's if it's going to be a one for one or I guess I don't know that specific information yet. But they're starting to build towards announcing a date. Okay. Yeah, that's exciting. I, I think that's uh, probably going to be the next really big thing happening in the CNFT space. Uh, at least, yeah, on my radar right now, that's that's kind of like the big thing. I want to make sure that I mint as many as I can, honestly. Um, yeah. I, I have a yeah. question for you. Yeah. Um, on the 20th is the uh, Genesis overexposed uh, paper, black paper. Um, I didn't know if you had got uh, I, I i know you had one at the beginning did you take profits are you waiting for the paper what's your what's your play for the overexposed i decided to take profits on those um it, it was i i kind of regret a little bit not um holding on to one of them mm. uh, but but i just took a risk well i de-risked but i also took a risk in the sense that you know i i was anticipating more of a dip after the after the mint of the mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that the Genesis would go below 1K and that's when I was gonna pick mine up again. So that just hasn't happened. So that play didn't work out for me, um, but yep. you know, taking profits was still not a bad worst ca case scenario. So yep. that's kind of the, the strategy that I took, uh, but I'm still excited about the project and, uh, and I'm very curious to see what they come, come out with, you know? Yeah. What about you? Do you have a, a Genesis? I was trying to time the secondary because I didn't get the public raffle. I didn't have a, a whitelist Genesis. So I scooped one up on the floor. I scooped up like a mid rank, mid rank rarity for like 525. Mm -hmm. um, I think the floor was 475 or somewhere in the 400s, I think, unless it's kind of rebounded. Uh, 
um, 510. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at that level. I think, you know, if I listed it a little bit higher than 525, you could make a small profit, but I'm trying to, uh, hopefully I, I, I trust Jeff and Ren. I hope that yeah. what it's, what's in the black paper, uh, cause the price is baked in, uh, for people getting excited about that. So hopefully yeah. what they're going to say is going to match the, uh, the hype. And, right. you know, either if the floor goes up a little bit, you know, I might take some profits and once again, add to my stack of, for the cornucopia stuff. Um, but I am excited to see what they have coming. Yeah. Yeah. I still have, I think three or four like mechanism, not, not Genesis. Oh, okay. Got it. Know? Got it. So, so I, I took profits on my Genesis, you know, I'm, I'm at least going to have always one of those uh that i'm gonna hold on to uh in the long run but yeah you, we'll see what happens to the floor price taking profits guys is nothing to be ashamed of right like yeah. i i keep saying that all right i i think that's it thanks for thanks for coming on blake with short notice thanks thor for having me on it's always great love to see what you guys what you're doing in the viking games and the stuff on twitch and your youtube videos keep grinding and excited to see where you go I appreciate it, man. And guys, let me know uh, in the comments what, what you're doing. You've heard what Blake and I are doing in this uh, very kind of difficult market. Um, and make sure to follow Blake on Twitter, jump into his Discord, and most importantly, subscribe to his YouTube channel because, you know, he, he has the nicest setup now in the YouTube, CNFT YouTube <laughs> no. uh, game. No. So he deserves your your follow and like, guys. Um, no, it's it's actually just because he's a, he's a smart and a great guy. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Good, I interest you in NFTs all of the time. FOMO into NFTs all of the time. Modesties are tragedy and ruffles are a crime. FOMO into NFTs, yeah, FOMO into NFTs, yeah, FOMO into NFTs all of the time.